is William Wilkerson, and I am an artist. I deal most exclusively with uh, oil paints. I dabble in a little bit of acrylics. Occasionally, I might work in pastel and a little bit of ceramics. And uh, you know, I'm experimenting. I haven't really opened up to too many other mediums, but that's about the basics of what I do at this present time. <laughs> If I'm going to put a number on how long I've been an artist, I'd say I have been an artist for about 40 years. And I embarked on this artistic journey probably when I was a kid. Um, ever since I was able to pick up a pencil and had a knack for drawing certain things, and people recognized the fact that I was able to do that very thing. And uh, ever since that time and along the way, I've been encouraged and and uh, you know, I just had this firm desire to pursue it, and actually um, went to college for it. And now I'm still even teaching it, so yeah, it's still in me. So I seize every opportunity to kind of get it out. But um, you know, here recently, I haven't, uh, you know, aside from the last show that I had, I'm ready to pick these um, uh, brushes back up again and, and get some stuff back out there floating in the uh, artistic realm here. You know, I don't know that I gave that particular aspect of, you know, art much thought as far as making a living. Um, I, uh, I, it was just something that I was infinitely passionate about. And I think it's just icing on the cake that, you know, people see uh, value in what you produce and what you do and they want to pay you for it. And, uh, you know, then you start thinking to yourself, you know, I could probably make this thing work. Uh, as far as, you know, uh, making a living from it. But uh, initially that was not my, my initial objective. I just, it was just something that I love to do and I, and I continue to do it because I love it first and, you know, the money comes after that, you know. Um, and, and I think that that should be true with most things that we, we do. You know, it shouldn't just be about making money from it, but it should be something that you're passionate about, and that's true for me. Uh, as far as me thinking that I went into the wrong occupation or the, you know, I just felt like that thing in me really defined who I was. And uh, because it was such a, 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 a critical part of who I was, and it essentially defined me as an individual, and it was not something that I could easily walk away from. And you know, sometimes you second guess yourself, and I'm, I'm sure that's true with most things, but for me, as it relates to art, it was such a part of me. I mean, to have that, have me not being able to do that would almost like be like cutting my arms off. And we definitely couldn't have that happen. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting. When uh, art school, uh, you know, I always had these ideas in my head. Even uh, I, I can think back as far as um, military. I was in the military and, and uh, and I went into the military with the express intent of financing my college education. So I got the GI Bill, and when that opportunity presented itself, when it was time to, you know, just go to art school, I was excited. I was stoked to no end. And uh, it was such an enjoyable experience just seeing like-minded individuals there and just seeing, you know, how one thing could have so many different viewpoints and ideologies. And uh, that, that aspect of it intrigued me to the high heavens. And, and it just made me that much more excited about, you know, just doing art, just being there with people that thought the way that I thought and, and just had a, a passion and a drive for doing those kinds of things. So that for me was fun. My first um, move after I was, after I graduated from ACA at the Atlanta College of Art, um, I was just trying to figure out, you know, where can I go with this a bachelor's of art degree and what could I do with it? And I don't know that at that particular point in time, even after having that degree, I had the, the, the confidence to do the things that I needed to do, even though people were, you know, just pushing me and, and, and just encouraging me to pursue it. Uh, you know, and, and I appreciate all this, all those people that were in my life at that time, you know, just pressing me on. But, I, you know, even though you got people telling you, you still have to figure it out for yourself. And uh, it took me a minute 
It took me a minute, even to, see, even to this point, it's still taking me some time. But I think at the end of the day, I still um, just allow that part of me to just kind of shine through in those moments when I, when I look out and I say, hey, you know what? I, I love this. I love this so much that even if I didn't go to ACA, even if I didn't have a, a, a degree, I couldn't see myself doing any other thing. It defines me. It's who I am. It's what I'm about. And, and I'll continue to do that until I take my last breath. My first job as an artist was actually working through the city of Atlanta at the Southeast Arts and Crafts Center. I uh, working with uh, Barbara Bowser, and uh, Alberta Ward, and uh, we were teaching ceramics and, uh, you know, just to senior citizens and, and anybody else who wanted to come in and have an art experience at Southeast Arts and Crafts Center. And I tell you, it was fun field, it was enjoyable, and, uh, you know, and, and just thinking that, you know, hey, I'm pouring some positivity into the lives of other people, and I'm enlightening them, and, and they're feeding off my, my passion and my energy and uh, they're, they're, they're receiving what I'm trying to give. And then from that, I went on to teach uh, elementary school through uh, Fulton County. And then from there, <laughs> I came out to California and was teaching at the junior high school level and at the high school level. And, uh, you know, and I did even a college class, you know, just a brief college class. But, you know, I just felt like that was in me and it was coming out and it's, and it's and it's such a rewarding experience to see that, you know, you're able to get people to that point where you're uh, enabling them to create and get in, get in touch with their creative side. Um, of course, there were some things that I encountered along the way where you have resistance and, 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 and various levels, the high school kids, the junior high school kids, the elementary school kids, they didn't have the same kind of appreciation, but still you can see the light come on when you're showing them different things. So even to this day, that intrigues me and excites me. Well, balancing my work day with my personal art, that's still a quandary. That's still problematic because I, you know, uh, like you had expressed earlier, that you're all in it or you're not. And on those days, whatever I'm all in, whether it's on the job or trying to be creative with my own artwork, the thing that gets me is that I can't go half half-heartedly at either of them. So if I'm on the job and I pour my all into it, I'm exhausted mentally, physically, and emotionally when I get home. So I don't have anything left in the tank to pursue my own artistic interests. So uh, when I retired from the teaching part of it, I say, oh man, this is really great. I can really go full tilt and bore into my own creative endeavors and uh, not, not and just have the energy and the drive, the enthusiasm, all those prime ingredients to make it the wholesome experience that I desire it to be. But uh, here again, I'm back to teaching. <laughs> but I am I'm waiting for the summer so that I can get really into my own artwork. And uh, we'll see. But I, I've taken a, a, a different viewpoint. The images that you know were in my mind uh, a couple of years ago, uh, it's, it's, I've evolved and changed, so it's going to be a little bit different now. So uh, I, I don't have to rush through and just create 10 paintings. I'm going to take my time and do one. <laughs> the, the images in my head, the subject matter now, I think is, is influenced by some of what I'm experiencing. Um, as, you know, my wife and I, we've just kind of just delved, dove into the church. And I have been reading... Uh, the Bible and a lot of the the, uh, the philosophy and uh, the stuff that's there it's been so vibrant and rich and and it's just touched me in a place that I've never been touched before and it just inspired me to do artwork that I feel would embody all those elements from the Bible and present it to the public with a wholesome expectation that you know it will serve to just take people to a different level in terms of how they present themselves to others, how we interact with one another. And, and I, I haven't quite uh, figured that out, but I have these images in my head and, and that's at the root of everything that I'm attempting to do right now.
So I'm hopeful that as I embark on this journey with this new work, that it will, you know, just serve that purpose in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So we'll see. It, it's, it's a process. It's an experiment. But it's, it's an experiment that I feel is necessary to engage in because of what I feel would be uh, the, the reaction, which I'm hopeful would be the byproduct of, you know, all that work that I'm hopeful to produce during that time. So we'll see. Uh, the artwork that I've done in the past um, and what I, my thoughts about that work now is a little bit different because, you know, I'm looking back uh, retrospectively and I don't know that I have the same feel about that work. It, while it was happening, it was good. It was cathartic. It was necessary. It was something that was in me. But I feel like at this particular point in time, I've grown beyond that. So when I look at it, I say, hey, it was good. It was good for where I was at that time. And, and I'm sure at that time, wherever I was growth-wise, it was, it was special work. It was good work, but uh, I'm in a different place now. And uh, I see the value in it, and not that it, the value has diminished, but I think for me, it was more about the painting rather than, you know, the images that I produced. So just a physical act of painting and the enjoyment and excitement that I got from that was probably the thing that I could focus on at this particular point in time. But the images, you know, I mean, they're, they're not really, uh, uh, how can I say it, a, a, a profound production or something that I feel is just going to resonate in my spirit or anybody else's for that matter but I it was necessary for me because it was a step in my growth and I, I've grown past that now I'm ready for some more different stuff more exciting stuff being an artist is my calling for this reason it's like you writers know that they're writers because they couldn't dream or imagine themselves doing anything else artists know that they're artists because they couldn't dream or imagine themselves doing anything other than that and I think for me, that's, that's been in me since I was a kid. And I could not imagine myself doing anything other than that. And I will continue to do that, like I said, until I can't, take, I can't pick up a brush or I don't have another thought left that will enable me to you know, express myself in that way. But uh, I, I know that that is such an uh, integral part of who I am. I can't divorce myself from it. I, that's who I am. I have to do that. And uh, to think any other way than that is just not going to be me. So that's who I am. Art defines me. And I'm sure, you know, most people that aspire to be artists or are living the, the art kind of situation or living in it, um, you know, couldn't imagine anything else. That's just who we are. <laughs> You know something, Otis? I'm glad you did this with me because, you know, you have these thoughts floating around in your head and you never really talk about it, you never really express it. But, you know, just for me to verbalize it, it's put out there in the atmosphere and now I have to respond to it. I am ready to go at this full tilt and board. And my book will be done this summer.